Woody Woo, this is Too Cold Scorpio, and you're watching State of Pro Wrestling. If you ain't at the State of Pro Wrestling, you ain't about, shh, you know what I'm saying out there in TV land. And I'm out. All right, we are here, Mill City Knights. This is John Freddy from MinnesotaProWrestling.com, and we've got a special guest here tonight, the Wrestlepalooza champion. He was one of 32 men worldwide selected by WWE to compete in the Cruiserweight Classic, the Sheik, Arya Davari. Hey, man, how's it going? You doing well? Very good, very good. And uh, Aria, for people who don't know who you are, can you tell us a little about yourself? Sure. My name is Sheik Aria Davari. Like you said, I was just in the Cruiserweight Classic on the network, which is probably one of the coolest things I've ever been a part of. But we are here tonight uh, for First Wrestling, where I will be defending my Wrestlepalooza Championship against Tommy Dreamer. So I'm pretty excited to wrestle someone who I've been watching since I was a little kid. Yeah, yeah. we were very excited as some old ECW fans growing up back then. Should be very exciting tonight seeing you in the Cruiserweight Classic. We were very proud the Minnesota Pro Wrestling fans were behind you. And uh, basically, the people want to know, we've seen you in the Cruiserweight Classic. We've seen you this past Wednesday on NXT. What is your current status with WWE? Uh, you know, that's a question that I'm getting a lot. What is my status with WWE? What's going to happen in the future? And as much as I would like to give you a definite answer, and by, this is by no means like a cop-out, I really don't know. Um, all right, all right. We don't want to get you in trouble. Either. No, it's not about getting me in trouble. A funny story, a few of the cruiserweights, uh, when they saw that commercial for Monday Night Raw, some of them, that was news to them. That's kind of how they found out, too. So right. people think that they tell you every last little bit, every last little detail, but that's not necessarily the case. You know, they have a giant company they're running right now so getting to each person and telling them exactly what their status is I don't think is like super high on their priority list so I think they have a lot of other things going on before this let every guy know like you're gonna be doing this you're gonna be doing that you know maybe until you get in the company full-time but as of right now I do not know my knowledge goes just as far as yours does. All right. All right, sounds good. The internet people would have murdered me if I went to ask that. <laughs> no, no. So. There's obviously uh, lots of speculation. It's fun to speculate things and kind of wonder and who's going to show up on Monday Night Raw, who's going to show up on the network. So it's always pretty cool that they're opening up this opportunity to a lot of independent wrestlers. Yeah, yeah it was very cool for them to shine a light on the independent scene. Um, now, in your experience down there, what were some of the biggest things that you learned or picked up or added to your game? Um, Wrestling with intensity, you know, uh, sometimes when we do a little bit of these smaller independent shows, um, I think some guys maybe get a little comfortable with what they're doing and they may not bring it as hard as they should. Um, but that's one thing that does not lack in the WWE. Everyone hits hard, everyone hits fast, everyone works extremely hard. And I love it. I love having to step my game up rather than have to bring my game down to accommodate someone else. Everybody in that company, they're on another level. So when you get there, you got to reach to their level as well, too, if you want to succeed. Beautiful, man. The people definitely recognize. Usually the Internet's a pretty harsh place for uh, wrestling critics. Be, you know. And uh, got a lot of props out there. Thanks. All right, we're going to do a mental test of strength. Okay. We're going to do 60-second challenge. I want to know if you can name 10 other wrestling sheiks in 60 ten seconds. Uh, okay, I'll give it a try. Uh, I'm going to go Iron Sheik, um, Sheik Adnan El Casey, um, the original sheik. Um, Sabu's uncle, Sheik Sean Davari. Uh, God, there's probably so many more. I know there's a, like there's a lot of Sheiks on the Independent. I know there's like a Sheik Ali Akbar. Like I see them all the time, but I don't know exactly what. I'll just say it's Sheik something something. Right. <laughs> but I think I got the main ones out there. All right, all right. Yeah, we just try to throw some out, have have some fun. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and stumble over my words as I try to BS my way through thinking of every single Sheik out there. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, we just try to have some fun with it. Uh, some music that Aria Davari listens to. Music. Uh, I honestly listen to every, everything except for country music. That's not really my thing. I never, you know, maybe old country from like the 70s I can kind of get down with, but. Yeah, the old outlaw country. Yeah, but today's country, not so much, but other rap, hip hop, rock and roll, now techno, EDM, all, all this right. stuff. It really depends what I'm doing. If I'm in the gym, if I'm out socializing with friends, it really depends what kind of mood I'm in, if I'm trying to just 
you know, unwind at home, listen to some slower music. So it just really depends what the mood is. All right, all right. I just figured I'd ask the new app, new atmosphere dropped. I was question, like, that those type of questions you don't get asked very often. It's always just wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. So uh, yeah, I figured we let let people know you better. Uh, what are some of your uh, favorite aspects of pro wrestling? Uh, for me, it's always been the entertainment part of it. That's what drew me in as a little kid, and that's what I always loved, the pageantry of it, the big elaborate characters, the over-the-top superhuman guys, superhuman women, uh, the awesome entrances, the pyro, all that stuff that I think sucked you in as a kid. Like That's the stuff I still appreciate. Don't get me wrong, as a professional wrestler, I appreciate really good wrestling too, but I got to say the entertainment side of it, the pageantry side of it, the, the really strong emotion uh, I want to say it was uh, when Daniel Bryan left the Wyatt family and they're in that cage match and he like took off the thing and like the crowd was going bananas. Like I felt that in my stomach and that wasn't about wrestling. That was something that I was like, oh, like this is a moment. And I feel like those moments when you create those, whether it's live or on TV or whatever it may be, um, when you're successful at doing something like that, that's what always feels good inside. Like it's awesome to go have a great match and a hardworking match, but when you pull emotion out of people, out of something that I think they all think they already know, they know the insides of the business, when you still get them, you get that raw emotion, whether it's cheering or booing, nothing's a better feeling than that. Beautiful, beautiful, and I appreciate that. And uh, what drives you to chase being a pro wrestler? It's something I've wanted to do. You know, I started watching wrestling when I was eight years old. I'm 27 now, and I just enjoyed it as a fan. Obviously, my brother got into it, and we always talked about being a tag team and stuff and i know a lot of people assume that he became a wrestler so i want him to be a wrestler too but we always talked about doing it together but watching him be a wrestler was like the coolest thing in the world watching him make it to the wwe like your own brother it was like mind-blowing and it was the most motivating thing i've ever seen in my life i was literally sitting on the couch with him when he got the call and said they're going to offer him a deal and i was like this happens you know uh, the, he was he's a kid from plymouth minnesota who you know just a regular kid who was a wrestling fan and got into independent wrestling and became a pro wrestler for the wwe like it blew my mind like we we couldn't believe it. we were jumping up and down like hugging each other like can't believe this is happening so like I, me my mom my dad my brother all like holy crap like if you're into wrestling and you take it seriously and you work hard like the cream does rise to the top you know you can make it it's not just some sort of pipe dream so that's why i always tell other young wrestlers i go you have to care you have to put forth the effort you have to go to the gym make the drives you know wrestle as many people as you can talk to as many veterans as you can and try to just get better at it so i always say my drive is to make it to the wwe you know i've had a taste of it now and i just want more so like i said i've had that drive in my stomach since i was about eight yeah, and you've obviously been making the making the steps and putting the work in to get this far. And uh, where can fans find you and follow you and keep up with uh, the current stuff that you're doing? Um, so I will say I have a Facebook account. I do keep it a little bit more private. Friends, families. Um, there are some like Minnesota fans on there who I've just gotten to know over the past uh, ten years of working. Um, but mainly my Twitter and Instagram. My Instagram is at Aria Davari, A R I Y A D A I V A R I, and then my Twitter is at Aria Davari four one one. So I post all updates, show posters, venues, all that kind of stuff on my Instagram and on my Twitter. I do it on my Facebook too, but like I said, that's a little bit more private for family and close friends. So follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. There you go, there you go. And, uh, Any interesting fun or fan stories growing up in YZ? Any fan stories? Like me as a fan? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did get to go to the WrestleMania 22 after party because my brother, I was in Chicago. All right. uh, my brother was employed at the time, so I got to go backstage. I actually went as a guest of the Laurinaitises because uh, Johnny Laurinaitis, his uh, niece, Jessica Laurinaitis, and uh, James Laurinaitis went to my high school. And we kind of befriended them because when Road Warrior Animal had his like 2006 run, him and my brother used to travel together, so they kind of became buds, so I became buds with the kids. Um, so I got to go to the WrestleMania 22 after party as their guest, and I got to uh, talk to The Undertaker for quite some time. My brother introduced me, and it was really cool, and you know, my brother pulled me aside, he goes, you know, don't act like a fan, like just, you know, even though I was a fan, I was there with my yeah. Batista shirt on. Um, but I, I got what he was kind of saying. Um, so I didn't bother anyone for pictures or anything like that as much as I wanted to. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely trying. And then uh, 
my friend Jess Lornetis, her mom saw me talking to Undertaker, and she had a camera in her hand. She's like, "Hey, get like get close together." And I was like, "Oh, uh, yeah." And he was like, "Yeah, no problem." And, like pulled me in. Like I still have that picture. It's on my Instagram. It's a really funny picture because I'm like 16. I'm like 120 pounds. Like no right. facial hair. Like backwards hat. Just like grinning ear to ear. It was one of the coolest moments ever uh, as a fan. I remember, and still yeah, as a wrestler today, it's kind of a cherished moment. So that was definitely one of the cooler ones because. He's a legend of his business, and he was kind of someone who I thought, like, I don't think I'll ever cross paths with him or ever meet him in any sort of fashion, so I did. It was pretty cool, and just the end to see him be, it was at the after party, so everyone was just cool and normal. That was one fan experience I'll never forget. I know a lot of people go, like, access and stuff, but, like, I gotta go to, like, after party and see everyone just being cool and chill after a big WrestleMania. Like, that was something that sticks with me to this day. Yeah, that was one thing we kind of wondered, like, ah, oh, did you get to tag along his little brother and yeah, yeah, get yeah. to see some cool yeah, stuff? Yeah, very little bit. He, like, but he did, he was very nice about it. He goes, whoever you want to meet, you know, like, let's go. And, like, we did the rounds. I got to meet, you know, John Cena, Mark Henry, Undertaker, all those guys, Batista. Like, it, it was really cool, like I said, to do it in, like, one setting and meet everybody all at once. After I just, I literally just watched WrestleMania, like, had the time of my life, like, went back to the hotel and then went to this, like, after party. I was like, this is, like, the ultimate wrestling day for, like, any fan, so... Get a little giddy just like talking about it still. So I remember it was one of the coolest things. But again, being around all those guys, like it just reinstated in my head because that was right around the time I was looking for wrestling schools. That I was like, man, I want to be here. Like I want to be a part of this party and a part of WrestleMania. Like it was very, very, very cool experience. But it just made me like want it even more. And like when we talked about like I was gonna start training and stuff and Undertaker it was real cool about talking that kind of stuff. That was something that stuck with me for a very long time. It's very cool. Yeah, that's one thing we're trying to do with the Minnesota Pro Wrestling site is just share with people all the fun that we have being yeah. a fan and just being able to meet the wrestlers at the local. There's a, there's a lot of great wrestling in pro wrestling. There's a lot of great wrestling in Minnesota. I think a lot of people kind of maybe sleep on this state sometimes, but there's a lot, a lot of talented guys. Um, Darren Corbin and Ryan Cruz and North Star Express are a great tag team. Obviously, Anarchist Eric Cannon's amazing. Um, you know, I'm here. You know, there's a there's a lot of other guys who may not have as much national exposure, but they're all really talented wrestlers. And I sometimes wish Minnesota got more exposure, but I think it's starting to happen. Eric Cannon has a really good thing going on here with First Wrestling, so yeah, it's, it's pretty yeah, it's pretty damn cool. So I think it's starting to happen a little bit that more talent is being discovered. But like even with this Cruiserweight Classic, you know, talents being discovered from all over the world, and they're getting on these pedestals where people can finally see them. Like, it's amazing. Yeah, it's. Very good for them to give back. I want to thank you, Aria, hey, stopping by, helping us with this interview. Very, very huge. means a lot to us at MinnesotaProWrestling.com. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Anderson. You are tuned in to the state of pro wrestling.